Okay. Well, you guys ready to talk some, some sports? Maybe. I may have to just put on my helmet. Ow! Dick Allen's new new sports. Written and directed by the bald-headed black man demands that the ladies have nicknamed sexual chocolate. Come and get some. Dress appropriately. Sports for all the jock straps. That's for everybody. Maybe I know the jock straps convince, confuse you, but sports bras can confuse us. Be there, everybody. Here's me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I have to answer a couple of questions people put on me. It says, you know, how come you're not wearing a suit? I said, well, wonder if I am wearing a suit and it just has no sleeves. I have no tie, but I'm wearing a suit. So I just want to let you know, man, you set a standard already that everybody's going like. Why you got to wear a suit? Because, you know, they said, look, you know, broadcasting. How come you, oh. how you all relaxed and everything, man? They, you're setting I'm only the standard. wearing this shit because I got a new date. <laughs> he said shit. You got to impress him? <laughs> wait a minute. You just, dude, I want to go back you, to the old Mario. Oh, wait a minute. You are now connecting your storyline to being I depressed. I'm going to talk about it. Depressed. Because of the I'm date. I'm telling you, it's stressful. <laughs> All right, man. It's stressful, say. y'all. All right, man. I messed up and got a young woman. So, okay. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. I hope you. I'm telling you, it's hard. I'm going to go to that picture and say, hey, Philip Rivers, he knows what it is. He knows he got he's, five, five girls. And he's a happy man. He's a happy man. All <laughs> he right? works out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Eugenics. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Look, let me say this, man. Tonight, by the time we see this upload, the game will have already taken place. New Orleans Saints at uh, Carolina. If New Orleans go down and lose, because it's a travel game, all the top teams got hit. All the trending teams, for the most part, will have lost since Thursday with the Chargers upsetting Kansas City. Pittsburgh, everybody's saying upset New England. Rams getting their ass handed to them by oh, Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, I think it was a weekend of up, upsets. Uh, and Dallas, because of their winning and how they were winning, blanked at the Colts. Now, Whoa. so what we're going to do first, because I'm just letting you know, we're not talking <laughs> college football. I dare anyone to sit back and say which football game they watched. And give me the name of the bowl first. Don't give me the, don't give me the score. Just give me the name of the bowl. That's it. Which team out of the teams I just mentioned was the biggest upset, the number one that the team losing has to be worried about? Because at this time of the year, most of the time they're doing adjustments for whatever reason, this matchup. So I want to go down the list quickly. So we're going to hit each one, one, two, three, four, real quick. Just say boom, 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 come back and say, what does it mean moving forward? So let's, let's take it to the top. The game to me, that was just recent right now, of course, is New England and Pittsburgh. I'm not as I'm, I'm not going to get into whether this is a meaningful game or not. I'm going to say still start with the Chargers last Thursday and they're not getting the respect. I'm going to worry about that later. I'll go with the, the Rams in Philadelphia as probably my number one because they were favored by 14 points. Two touchdowns, and it looked like, you know what Philadelphia looked like? They looked like the team that was coming up when, when Nick Foles kicked in last year, and they went on a run. Exactly. So, now, before we go any further, let's go to the, the Dallas, just to give you a glimpse. Dude, it's, everybody said, be afraid of this team. They're not in the playoff shit, but everybody's hoping they don't. And I said, you guys are overhyping it. And then they blank the Cowboys, 23 to zip. With their number I one, I don't even know how to take this stuff. <laughs> they it's too dramatic. <laughs> these love. So, so wait a minute. Which one is saying this team has to worry? Worry. I mean, it's going to be the team that's that. I mean, of course, all the losses. Which team out of this group do you think? Oh my God, I think they got problems. I think it's Dallas Cowboys. You think it's Dallas? now because I think New England kind of knows what they have. Okay. I think they really do. I think Belichick is always aware of where he's weak. Right. He just keeps his mum on it. Right. And that he's trying to get the most out of what is a team that has more weaknesses. So I think that New England 
even in losing to Pittsburgh, just makes them clench their jaw tighter and get more resolute because I think they know what they have. So, so, so that game, what you're saying is because they both teams don't have the defenses they had before. So they both came in kind of limping and struggling. Steelers on that two or three game losing streak. And then, of course, New England coming off of theirs, uh, being able to go, hey, look, you know, we don't have the same impact as we had before. So that whole division, that whole area, Pittsburgh and New England from last year, that's not the teams you're seeing this year. So I don't think either one of them have to worry because it's such a, there's such a down right. pl- play in how the quality of play in both their, in their con- respective conferences. I'm going, either one can get out of their limping. So I, and they know it. Yeah. They're still – and Pittsburgh, I think it makes them feel good. It says more about them and their resurgence than it says about right. New England going down. Yes. I'm with you. I think they expect it. They're not going to overhype it. Right. They're not – it doesn't mean that to them. Right. And that leads us to the other games. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it now. Now. I, which this game, I, I think they got the blueprint. And, I, and it, it's an obvious blueprint. Um, the take that I've seen, which is it's smart when the teams are doing this. Rams like, you know, they got Gurley. Rams like pushing the ball down the field, meaning that you need more time to protect a quarterback so he can hit those wonderful plays going downfield. Well, they've been able to adjust. These teams are going, well, we'll just have to pressure golf because Jared, coming out of college, had legs. Well, he doesn't have legs now. He doesn't. Run, and they, he took holds, <laughs> they took his and, legs. They took his legs. And he doesn't run, run. He just scoots around on he his may, penis. I'm not I'm gonna leave you. <laughs> that's all you, bro. You're you, you gonna take you're gonna I'm take the quality. How he gets around you know with no legs. You're you gonna take a, the quality of this, I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> okay. Just scoot so, around. Yeah, right. I'm just, scoot around. I'm just gonna say <laughs> Philadelphia, you're not in the playoffs yet, but people should fear you because I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and they're gonna say oh, it's blasphemous. When Nick Foles comes in the game, there's a fluidity that happens with him, and you see it. Secondly, they figured out how to go like this. Our front four, all we have to do is pressure. And so for the last two games, you had Jared Goff throw seven interceptions. So they're hitting the snake head. You hit the head of the snake, you disrupt everything else and its flow. Now, does that mean... Does that mean that Rams are in trouble because they got a blueprint? No, I think Sean McVay will go, okay, it's it's timing. They they blueprinted us. Now I have to now come back and scheme. Do you believe this is a shape shifter as now the Rams basically now are not going to overwhelm any other teams going into the playoffs? They now will be struggling to compete just at the level that Chicago and Philly just handed them losses and overwhelmed them with defense. No, it's going to be a struggle. I think that's what that's what it's saying. You know, playoffs is a different animal. Right. I think we're all surprised at the flaws that all the teams are showing at different moments. So, no, it's. I think it really says something about the parity, Vic, and that, no, it's not going to be a cakewalk for any of them. Right. Any no. of them. It's no. going to really be right. a difficult situation, and they're going to have to earn it. Okay. Now, I want to go back up to the top because the game, I think, um, uh, before we go on down, the game, I, I think, that get no respect because somehow or another, I believe the most consistent team that makes comebacks. What they say, the, the identity of a team is when it travels and it doesn't give up. It doesn't let the home field take advantage of it. It doesn't look at that. And so when a team can go into other arenas and say, we don't have the Kansas City splash, we don't have the New England, we strategically go after your weaknesses, we don't have the overwhelming New Orleans Saints overpowered offense if you go to the Dome, this team quietly is like, you know, we're the most consistent and complete team. Should you fear us because we're the only team that beat Kansas City in Kansas City? How come they're not getting respect? They're not going to get respect from me, really, till they're in the Super Bowl. Okay. I mean, well, 
Mm. Not mm. that kind of respect. Mm. I really, really embrace uh, Philip Rivers, you know, uh, what he's done over right. the years. And he's a gunslinger who's been there consistently. He, we know he's a Hall of Famer. Right. We know he's a Hall of Famer. Right. So, but you know, if you're a Chargers fan, you've been consistently disappointed over the recent times. Right. Even though they do have this legacy of these teams that were great. Now, this one I'm going to have to wait and see. But, Vic, if if they find themselves in the playoffs, right? like anything can happen, they totally have a chance to be in the Super Bowl. They yeah, totally right. have a chance because right. at any given moment, we know they can be the best team in the AFC. Right. And, and, so and that's, 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 they're showing that. And just so people can understand, I know that they're, they're going to think, is it a one-off? I said, now they beat Kansas City. They beat Kansas City. With their City. number one running back and several injuries, number one receivers out of the game, number one uh, running backs out of the game. They had a few other injuries, and they still beat them. So this, the, I fear the team that literally goes, we may not overwhelm you, and if we get down, we're getting down against some of the top teams. They've already played the Rams. They played Pittsburgh, got them, got Kansas City. They literally, to me, have a blueprint where they go, we're not going to get blown out. Well, they're, they're the dark horse, according to me. I can totally see it happening. Yeah. I don't think, it, you know, it's still long odds to me, kind of. I agree. But there's no question that they can pull this off. Right. So if they actually find themselves there, right. I may be rooting for them. Okay. I actually may be rooting for them, especially because of how much I have respect for uh, Philip Rivers. Let's go right back down to Dallas and Indianapolis because I just want to see if Mario can inspire the Dallas fan base not to worry about the Indian No, Indian Texas, <laughs> cash it in. No, no, wait a minute. Sorry, no, Texas. No, no, man, no, no. Wait a, minute. Wait a minute. You either have to ride the bandwagon and say Indianapolis Colts is getting into the playoffs. You guys got to worry about us. Or you're going to you say, no, nah, that's just a one-off. Or you're going to say Dallas. They exposed you so badly that you have a great offensive line. You have the number one running back. Is it Dak? Is it the coaching? What do you think happened where does Dallas have to worry or is it just a blip? Which one? <laughs> Not so sure with this one, Vic. I am increasingly believing that the issue with Dallas is coaching. That they would do like Cleveland did mm -hmm. if you switched coaching. Yeah. I see the ingredients for a great team. I don't know why it underperforms in the way that it does, but it may do just like what Cleveland does. Right. When you shift the coach, all of a sudden the performance looks so much better. Right. So, I don't know. <laughs> In terms of, I'll give it a one, what do you say, a one-off? A one-off, yeah. It's more of a one-off because I don't think Indianapolis is that good. Okay. They do have, again, it's another example of a team that has some good building blocks, but still got to do a lot around it, you know? I, okay. This is so hard because I watched the game and I was going, they got in. I mean, literally, this team, and, and, and looking at it from what they call their healthy, this is the team that finally got healthy. They waited. They got everybody in position. Watch how they play. And they say your eye test is what you look at. This team, now I see what they said. They're fighting to get into the playoffs. Nobody wants to deal with them because – no teams have shut out Dallas. Even as bad or good they had on their days, zero. Goose egg with Elliott and Dak. That is, and Gordon. I mean, I'm literally sitting up here going like this. Man, I wonder how Jerry's feeling today. Yeah, Jerry's world is. Jerry's kind of pissed. Yeah, I'm just saying. So. I don't think Jerry's too happy. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I All mean, because right. they, I'm even Ezekiel, what are they feeling today? I don't know. Let me say this. And, you know, I, I put up the standings here because we're going to move on because I have to get to something else. I put up the standings because if you are talking about parity right now, is there one team now that's head and, you know, head and shoulders above everybody else. No, there's none right now. So right now I think the best bet is, is that you're looking at what team is trending up with defense. 
It'll be interesting tonight because New Orleans goes to Carolina, who has a horrific defense right now. Now, just have you had a soft prediction, Mark? Soft prediction. New Orleans, they do better at home. They're a dome team. Everybody knows it. Does Cam find a way to neutralize that offense? Or does Breeze say, look, we won't score 35, 40 points. But our defense is better than your defense, which I have to say yes. So this should be a slam dunk. This should be, a, this should, they should win by at least 10 to 12 points. Now, what do you think? I think they're going to win by 10 to 12 points. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to slam Cam. Yeah. I and feel, the boys. Yeah, I, I do. I feel bad. I'm not sure what is the issue with them either. Right. In terms of their defense suddenly. Right. Uh, I have no idea. I haven't been able to see if it's a health issue. It's just. Yeah, but in that, you know what? But I can almost say that when I look at the NFC South, it's that's the whole division. Yes. Other than New Orleans, Carolina, did we expect this? Did we expect this from Atlanta or even no. Tampa Bay? No, we Come didn't. Come on, we didn't expect. We expected this conference for them to be at least more competitive as a conference. Right. And now the conference as a, as a whole just, just looks how do you get a week. How do you take a Carolina Panthers team that was 6-2 and two and now have lost five games straight? Do you bet against Breeze? Going to a team that's lost five straight. No. No, you don't. And the other thing, in all fairness, now that I look at your standings as presented, Vic, you know, it is unusual for any conference to have more than two contenders. Right. What's interesting is when you look at each of these, every one of them has at least one underperformer. Right. It's just that the NFC East looks a little bit better. It's just it's a lot of, of parity, man. Uh, yeah. the, the losses of top teams like the Rams, uh, whether it's Dallas, they've allowed these other teams that are squeaking in to get into wild card position now to have hope because they've they've brought these top performing teams down and all of a sudden you see hope. So, you know, hey, look, I just want to do this and one last shout out to Seattle. How can you go in in San Francisco, a team that like won three games and lose? when you were trending up hard, that solidifying that, that I was going. So I can't put you up there. Russell's doing a great job. It's almost like the number. I, I, I watched the game. I said, well, San Francisco, if you've been playing like this all year, you would have more than three wins. Or is it they just got their number? So I just want to give recognition to Seattle. you got work to do. That's all you got to do. All right, going into my um, top five, I got to do this, you guys, because this could change orders. My top five, NFL top five, I got New Orleans Saints because they've yet to play and they've yet to lose so this weekend, so they don't get the hit because they're still at 11-2, and two, the best record. Then I bumped up the charges, you guys. I kept them at four and five. Every time they won, every time I found an excuse, I said, I'm sorry. 11-3, you guys win on the road. You got the best wins on the road against the best teams. So you're number two, Kansas City. Yeah, you took the hit from the Chargers. You go third. Rams, okay. Ordinarily, I will put the Chicago Bears above the LA, LA Rams. But as long as the Rams have that lead, they say, well, Chicago, you got to come to our house. So I still think they're favored there. And Chicago's at five. Um, below that, you can mix and match who you want. Houston, doing pretty well. But there's an issue with... There's an issue with the quarterback. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just saying get rid of the ball more. Stop holding on to it. Indianapolis, I'm bumping you up. Pittsburgh ahead of New England, and then if Seattle rounds up the top ten. Any of these that you see, Mario, that you would shift because no, you act so you agree that the Chargers are, are number two. Yeah, right now I think okay. that's I yeah okay yeah, I, I'm pretty, it's funny I've been with you kind of consistently on your rankings okay. For most of the season. Right. Now, this will be interesting. If New Orleans <laughs> lose tonight, do you put Chargers at number one? I guarantee you, everybody, no. they're going to put Kansas City at number one. They're going to bump them right back oh, up. Oh, if New Orleans loses if tonight. If they lose they tonight. Depends how they lose. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, that could do it. You're right. right. Yes. Okay. All right. No problem. No problem. Last subject here. I want to give you guys what they call, you know, 
2018 most influential in sports. Yeah, Big Dog ASM beats out LeBron, Adam Silver, Roger Goodell, and more. Sports Business Journal recently uh, yeah, released its annual list of the most influential people in sports. For 2018, at the top of the list sits American Sports Gambler, a nod to the massive new consumer base that for decades have been mostly off limits to U.S. companies in every state. But Wow, the Nevada. American Sports Gambler as a group is the yes. most influential. Absolutely. In at, sports at, business. In sports business. business. Remember, yes. this is sports business. Yeah. And Thank I you. kind of agree. This is what's affecting gambling, right? Right. When combined with the online gaming and even gambling All related day. to fantasy football, right? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, Vic. I'm with you. I just didn't think about it. Most influential in sports right. business. And below this, I have listed, if you guys are going to come to the website, it will be there for a while, for a few weeks, the top 50. And Adam Silver is number two, ahead of Roger Goodell. LeBron James is at 15. Jerry Jones is ahead of Robert Kraft. So when you see these listings, this is not about people who trend virally as much as it is about here's where the real business influence what you're doing. And I start going, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, yeah, you're right. This is not social trending at certain apps. This is where the money and who, closed, who, who controls the distribution and impact of the money that's invested in their respective jobs and responsibility. So I'm just letting you know when you sit there and go, well, where's the names I'm used to? I said, well... American sports gambler, man. Let you know, Mario. Are you gonna start betting, bro? No. <laughs> Why not? Maybe you might as well give me. I in. never win shit like that, man. <laughs> I don't have any faith in my ability to bet. You can do it, man. No, I don't. You, hey, look. I, I always lose. You know, you know what? Better odds on that than the lottery, right? Yes. Well, there you go. Hey, you guys. I'm a done deal today. Hope you guys enjoy the holiday. We off until next time around. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Victor Allen's New New Sports, a recurring segment of the Morning Call with Mario show. There every week, written and directed by the ball-headed black man, the one the ladies have nicknamed Sexual Chocolate. Remember to dress appropriately, bring your own foot powder, sports bras, and jock straps for everybody. That way we're all confused. Now be there. Sports, people. Sports, people. Sports.